Rashawn Clark is our referee tonight. Robert Betts, Paolo Cardea, our assistant referees. Michael Kelly Dunn, the fourth official, as we are underway from Clockner Stadium. As in any soccer match, the first goal so integral, but in a matchup like it is tonight, Virginia, when it scores first, 5-0-2. The Cavaliers have not won a match this season when they've trailed to start the game. And for the American Eagles, they have three wins on the season. All three wins have come when they've scored first, 3-0-2 when they tally the first goal. Troy Elgersma is the forward here, battling Nick Dang, who just had a superb match one week ago against James Madison, all over the field making tackles against the Dukes in a 1-0 victory over JMU. An own goal by the Dukes gave Virginia that victory on Tuesday night in the 90th minute. And then Virginia played in a wild, physical, tenacious battle against Boston College in Newton, Massachusetts. Nick Dang getting the only goal in that match for UVA. Cavaliers, as they have been in recent matches in their 3-5-2 formation. Only one change for George Gelnovac tonight as compared to the Friday match against Boston College. Victor Akum is now a reserve for UVA as Austin Rome takes his spot as the left center back. Rome, his first DNP of the season against Boston College. But he has logged a lot of minutes here in 2024 and excited to get back into the fold tonight. American, meanwhile, will defend in a 4-4-2, but Coach Samuel said his team will attack in a 3-4-2-1. Ethan Boyle, one of the graduate students for this American team, has been with the program for five seasons. He wears 23 in the blue. As Virginia recovers possession with Umberto Pella. The junior from Milan was injured in warm-ups against Stanford back on September the 27th. And Pella missed the next three matches, including that Stanford game. But he has been back over the last three matches now and played the full 90 in each of the last two against JMU and BC. Pella and Gashi, the two veterans in the central midfield for the Hoos. Toshi Davis is the one change for American tonight, 22 in the blue, as Nick Dang intercepts his pass as Davis was seeking Elgersma. American is without Leo Paloma tonight. The senior from Boyds, Maryland, picked up his fifth yellow card of the season against Lehigh, so once you do that, you are suspended for a match. Palomo has played 44 games in his American career, so he is a big loss for Coach Samuel's team tonight here at Clockner. Here's Triton Beauvoir coming off the ACL injury a season ago. Picked up that injury on September the 8th of 2023 against Duke. And Beauvoir is still seeking his first goal back as he plays as a left forward tonight with Joaquin Brisuela up there as well. Paul Visa leads the team with four assists, floats it in, and Matthew Tibbetts controls for American. Tibbetts, good size at 6'2", the junior from Westboro, Massachusetts in Worcester County. Part of the New England Revolution Academy growing up, so certainly former Virginia head coach and former sporting director of the New England Revolution, Bruce Arena, has familiarity with him. Tibbetts making his 33rd career st start for American. Tibbetts made three saves but allowed the three goals against the Mountain Hawks on Friday night. Mangaroff finds some space for Gashi, but Cooper Nunn tries to shield it out of bounds, and he does so successfully for an American goal kick. Nunn, another player who has been in this American system for a while now, his third season with the Eagles after moving over from Monroe Community College in New York. Nunn has not missed a single minute in a match he's played in an American uniform. Now 47 starts and not a single minute off the field. Pretty impressive. Brendan Lamb to throw it in for the Cavs. This dude has played several positions for the Hoos this season. 
but he is settling in as the left wing back in this 3-5-2 formation. American hoping for an opportunity here. Inside the box, but Trudy with a massive save. Rebound shot, it goes in for American. Toshi Davis. Just over five minutes in, and a gasp here from Klockner. Toshi Davis opens his collegiate account, his first ever goal in college. Give a lot of credit to Troy Elgersma, who beat Austin Rome. Toe poked it onto Vitruni, who made one massive save, but off the deflection, Davis converts. Now, Elgersma is a guy that Coach Samuel pointed out. Only two goals this season. He's tied for the team lead. Three other players have two goals. But they were hoping for more production from Elgersma. Yeah, he doesn't get the goal there, but he creates it. And a Virginia team that has allowed just one goal over the last three matches concedes in the first six minutes tonight. You know, you look at this game on paper and you think to yourself, all right, American walking into a great college landscape here on grounds against Virginia, a national powerhouse over the years, and you know, hey, they're going to sit back and absorb a lot of pressure. Zach Samuel said that's not going to be the case. American thinking about two, but it's an offside here on Sam Hershey. Oh, boy. Wow, the Eagles are revved up from the start. Well, Samuel was saying that this game means a whole bunch to Virginia from an RPI standpoint. And yeah, this win for the Hoos isn't going to raise the RPI all that much, if at all. But you lose this match, and the RPI is going to go down significantly. For American, well, the Eagles know, look, they're not getting an at-large selection into the NCAA tournament at 3, 4, and 5 coming out of the Patriot League. So the RPI is pretty irrelevant to them. So they're going to go out, and they're going to play. They're not going to sit back. Pella finding the short pass. Grant Howard, the Virginia Tech transfer, who has really settled in as the right center back for the Hoos. As Virginia starts to advance into the attacking third with Joaquin Brisuela checking back to the ball. Brisuela, the freshman from Argentina, who has now started in four out of the last five matches for George Gelnovac. You know, a lot of Cavaliers fans might be thinking, all right, this team only has scored 16 goals in the first 12 matches. And yeah, the start wasn't great, just two wins over the first nine. But through the first 12 matches, Virginia has scored the exact same amount of goals this season as the Hoos did last year. They had 16 goals through the first 12 a year ago. And Virginia eventually made the Sweet 16 before falling to Indiana. Here's Sam Hershey, Batruni out of his net. If Hershey realized it, he may have popped it over Batruni as Hershey pirouettes and finds the short outlet with Taku Takahashi. Lamb on the intercept. Pella steers it. And here is Danny Mangarov, one of the main playmakers. Nicholas Shirley taps it out of bounds for a Cavaliers throw. And Mangarov wants to work quickly, finding Brisuela. Shirley pokes it towards the corner flag. The big-bodied Brisuela taking on two Eagles. Out of play it goes for an American throw. Cavaliers yet to register a shot on Matthew Tibbetts. And Joey Petruni faced two on that flurry that got the Eagles on the board. So how about that? Toshi Davis, a guy who was only in the starting lineup tonight because Leo Palomo has five yellow cards, which means that he's suspended. And he's the one that gets on the score sheet. Lamb, excellent trap as he latches onto the ball, finds Umberto Pella, slides it inside. Mangarov always loves to cut in with that left foot. 
as the clearing attempt from American is ricocheted off the back of Mangarov, who has it back right now. Beauvoir asking for it. Mangarov falls down, and referee Rashone Clark says, uh-uh, get up and continue play. Here's Boyle, 12 goals, six assists in his career as he suits up in match 71 in an American uniform tonight. Last season in all Patriot League second team selection, tied with Hershey for the team lead with six goals. The goal from Davis, just the 14th this season for American. And the Eagles are playing in their 13th match here in 2024. So now just over one goal per game. Sam Hershey, who's a terrific hold-up forward. Nick Dank tries to hold it in bounds, but can't do so. And you really have to compliment American for its confidence, its assertiveness. They're here to play tonight as the clock is stopped with Troy Elgersma down for American. And the Eagles are also without one of their key guys in Zemi Rodriguez, senior from Goshen, New York, in Orange County. Two goals and two assists in each of his first two seasons, three goals and five assists last season en route to an All-Patriot League first-team selection. He suffered a torn ACL in the first match this season against Cal Baptist, 10 minutes in. Great leader, great player, and they have had to find some combinations in the midfield without him. Meanwhile, Virginia is without Reese Miller from the torn ACL he suffered against Wake Forest in September. Brisuela lets it go through his legs, and now he charges inside the box. Brisuela with the crack. Goal kick, AU. Joaquin Brisuela, maybe a foot or two away from her, his first collegiate goal. Just over 11 minutes into our opening half, American with the first goal tonight from Toshi Davis in minute six. Mangarov weaving towards the middle, drops it off for Gashi. Switch the point of the attack now for Grant Howard. He has license to adventure forward from his right center back spot. Howard left footed shot, looping wide. Okay, American. Well, over recent seasons, the Cavaliers have had some meh starts and then some furious finishes towards the end of the regular season. You go back to 2022, they were just four and three through their first seven matches, but over the final nine regular season games, five, one, and three, making the NCAA tournament, making the second round. Last season, four, three, and one through the first eight. Then Virginia, 6-0-2 in the final eight regular season games and made it all the way to the Sweet 16 before falling to Indiana. And this year, 2-4-3 through the first nine. First time only two wins in the first nine since 1967. But now the Cavaliers have won three straight, but they're going to have to dig deep tonight against an American team that is providing a lot of pressure early on. Beauvoir bodying down Takahashi. Elgersma slides it through, 1v1 against Petruni, and it's another conversion for American. It is sweet, and it is from Hershey. Could you fathom a better start if you're an Eagle supporter? There are jaws that are on the Klockner bleachers right now. Sam Hershey nets his third goal this season, ninth of his career for the D2 Lockhaven University transfer.
Well, American felt pretty solidly about its matchup against Lehigh on Friday. We told you earlier that the XG, the expected goals, pointed in American's direction. Thought the Eagles had the better first half against Lehigh for sure, just from the eye test. But the Mountain Hawks found a way to put three into the back of the net of American and got that 3-1 win over the Eagles. Thomas Robertson scored two for Lehigh, including one that Matthew Tibbetts probably should have gathered in on a cross that he could not corral and it ended up onto the foot of Robertson. American got its goal late in the match from Hershey in the 82nd minute as he chipped the goalkeeper for Lehigh and that got the Eagles on the board. Mangarov balloons it right to uh, Triton Beauvoir. Lamb waiting as he deals it over to Umberto Pella. He is in charge of keeping this team very calm despite really tough moments that the Hoos have faced and undoubtedly will face as the season continues as one of the captains. Mangarov keeps it in as Lamb surges forward. Now Beauvoir. Walled off there by the defense of Fogel. Ethan Boyle fends off Gashi. And American can advance. Takahashi a little bit behind his central midfielder Oliver Snowden that time. But it does go back to Tibbetts. American playing with its foot a little bit here. Gashi, the Swede, looks towards the middle. Pella shoots. That goes off the body of Cooper Nunn, one of the captains. And a corner kick for the Hoos, the first for either team tonight. George Geldovac not wasting any time. He does not like some of what he's seeing out there from his defense. So Victor Akum, who has been a starter recently, is back in, taking out Austin Rome. Akum provides this team a little bit more speed, some more athleticism. Coaching staff agrees that he is an MLS athlete. Sophomore from Edmonton. He's gotten more opportunity after the injury to Reese Miller. Danny Mangaroff pours in the corner. It'll bounce down here for Akum. Now it's Gashi with Fogel defending. Pella twisting, Mangarov pleading for the ball, and he does receive it as he was near the corner flag. Mangarov in isolation with two American players draped on him as Nunn gets it away. The Cavaliers enter tonight's match, second in the ACC, only behind Pitt, with a goals against average of 750, 15th in the nation. But American scoring two goals in the first half and in the first 12 minutes and 38 seconds. Snowden and Elgersma each get an assist on the goal from Hershey. Howard delivers it to Mangarov. That goes off of Kobe Kiamani, freshman from White Marsh, Maryland, a northeastern suburb of Baltimore. A lot of youth in the American lineup. Kiamani, Snowden. They also bring in some freshmen off the bench. And they're going to gain valuable experience tonight. Visa's crossed in is blocked. And the Hoos have another corner. Trying to get the energy back into Klockner. Virginia opts to go quickly. They stay on side off the corner. Gashi shoots. That goes off a body. Sliding effort from Takahashi. He's got Japanese youth national team experience. And we do expect Matthew Tibbetts to be under siege tonight, especially with his team scoring the first two. Virginia is going to dump a lot of pressure on him over the next 27 of the first and the 45 of the second. Curled in, goes off the body of Nunn, and we will do it again from the near side. 
There is some carnage inside the six yard box right now. And a player remains down for UVA. That is Nick Dang, the transfer from Lipscomb, who leads the Cavaliers with four goals this season as the center back. He is such a dangerous piece, offset pieces. And this is exactly what Virginia cannot afford to have happen right now. Dang was ranked as the 18th best player by top drawer soccer in the preseason. Excellent to see that he's okay. Here's another look at it. As Dang was wrapped up inside by a, a couple of American players, fell down awkwardly, but he will continue here as the Cavaliers have yet another corner kick. Towards Tibbetts, two-fisted punch. It goes high in the air, and Virginia finds the back of the net. Tibbetts had issues against Lehigh, and those problems continue tonight against the Hoos. Now, referee Rashawn Clark will take a look at this last play. You see Triton Beauvoir, who is right near Matthew Tibbetts. Well, that's the challenge from earlier that resulted in Dang being down for a couple of moments. George Gelnovach and the Cavaliers waiting to see if this goal does stand. For now, it is credited to Dang. So you see Tibbetts launching it in the air, and then Dang, he was crashing into the goalie, but he was certainly locking his eyes on the ball. And after review, they say the goal stands. I think that's the right call. You know, sometimes you see the goalies overprotected, but Dang certainly is seeking the ball. He is hunting it and trying to put the ball into the back of the net. He succeeds. His fifth goal on the season and his fourth with his head. Also had a penalty kick goal against Maryland back in September. So the temperature of this match, it has significantly changed. Cavaliers slice the deficit to one. Ethan Boyle brings it back to Takahashi. And here is Fogel, the junior from Brooklyn, two-footed guy, so he can play either the right back or the left back spot. And you'll see him on the left later tonight when Jared Weber checks in eventually. Here's Beauvoir holding it up against Fogel and a throw in for the Hoos. Well, you're going to face adversity, whether it's within a season or within a match. And now Coach Gelnovach hoping that his team can respond to that early disadvantage. Brisuela, Beauvoir, Gashi. Excellent work from the Cavaliers to escape some pressure. All the way out wide now to Paul Visa. Senior from Germany. Started all but three games in his first three years of college. And has now started all 13 here in 2024. Visa and Pella and Gashi, those are the veterans right now for the Hoos. Brendan Lamb, it's easy to forget that he's still a sophomore from Apex, North Carolina, in the Raleigh area. Triton Beauvoir, he's a junior, but 
Played just five matches last season before he suffered an ACL injury. Beauvoir using his body. Akum, the natural lefty, as he twirls off of the pressure from Hershey, one of the two goal scorers for American, the other being Toshi Davis. But Trudy hammers it. Shirley with the header, but it's right on to the body of Triton Beauvoir. He can certainly gallop. Brisuela, Gashi, Pella, those two excellent friends. Pella fizzes it. Cross in from Visa. And American has gotten in front of a couple of crosses early for UVA in this match. We're still not even midway through the first half. A lot has happened. Visa lifts it towards Brisuela. Back up into the air. Cavalier sticking with it. American eventually clears, but it's back onto the foot of Akum. From the Vancouver Whitecaps Academy. Lamb and Beauvoir. Triton with two defenders collapsing on him. Jonah Fogel claiming that it last touched Beauvoir, but referee Rashawn Clark says no. Corner kick for the Hoos. Virginia already with five. Cavaliers have dumped eight shots towards the American net. Only the one on target. That's the one that went in from Dang. Mangarov, another one. American sacrificing the body. Ethan Boyle that time doing the defensive work. Howard facilitating for Akum. Gashi. And now Visa, the normal right wing back on the left side off the corner. Mangarov making a run off the body of Shirley. Keeps it in bounds, and Daniel Mangarov is saying, this is a handball. Now the referee can go back and look at it. George Gelnovac has his arms outstretched saying, hey, you have every available opportunity to look at the replay. But Clark must have been really sure that Mangarov was incorrect. Visa back in his natural right spot for Beauvoir on the end line. Lamb at the edge of the 18. Arcs it in. There is Tibbetts to haul it in. As we now approach the midway point of the first half, George Galnovac continuing his conversation with the fourth official, Michael Kelly Dunn. Sam Hershey alone up top for American. He chests it right into the path of Pella. Joey Petruni, who made a handful of clutch saves against Boston College back on Friday, including with 11 seconds to go, he made a 1v1 save on Xavi O'Neal on a toe poke that preserved the 1-0 win. Visa, the cross off of Mangarov and just wide. Oh, he really snapped that neck, hoping to get it on target. He did not. And American avoids giving up the game tying goal. And now a player is down for the Eagles. That's, we believe, Cooper Nunn. All right, so Nunn's back up. Visa, such a threat in wide areas. That was Kiamini doing the defending. And then Mangarov went right into the back of Nunn. Thankfully, Mangarov wasn't injured. So we continue play. And Brisuela knocked down for a free kick for the Hoos. Oh, 
Capella slithering. Maintains control as the ball dies down on the foot of Mangarov. Forced to reset for Akum. Pella drifting back as the six, as a lot of central defensive midfielders will do. Gashi tries to get a step on Boyle, turns it over to Shirley, and now Boyle twisting. Hershey fell down, and Akum has an easy time to reset it for the Hoos. Virginia wins tonight. The Cavaliers improve to 6-4-3 four, and three with four consecutive wins. American hoping to get back in the win column after a 3-1 loss to Lehigh on Friday. The Eagles just 1-2-2 two, and two over their last five matches. That ball bypasses Howard and a throw in for the Eagles. Well, American and Virginia have faced off four times in the NCAA tournament. Cavaliers 2-1-1 one, and one in those four matches. American winning in the second round of the NCAA tournament back in 1979. It was a nil-nil tie in 84, but the Cavaliers advanced in penalty kicks. Virginia won in the Elite Eight in 97. Cavaliers won in the second round in 2004. Will Hall scoring the game-winning goal in that matchup in the 68th minute. Cavaliers would go on to get to the Elite Eight before losing to Duke. UVA won 11 consecutive meetings in this series from 1999 to 2011, but Americans stunned Virginia in October of 2015, nearly nine years to the date. One nil over the number 12 Cavs. That was the first time the then defending national champion Cavaliers were shut out all season long. And American picked up its first win over the Cavs since 1998, but UVA got its revenge in September of 2022, winning 2-0 as two subs scored for the Hoos on that day. Andy Sullins, freshman scoring his first career goal on a half volley. He's now with Virginia Tech, by the way. And Kome Obogu, who is still on the team and should be featured as a reserve tonight, scored in the 83rd minute. And it was interesting. You look at some of the quotes after that match. George Geldovac said, they're not an easy team to play against. They were pretty organized, offensively difficult to break down. Very similar for American this evening. Same leadership, Zach Samuel, sixth year as the head coach, a game under 500 in his head coaching career, 33 wins, 34 losses, and 24 ties. Remember, American scored first in this match, and when the Eagles do so this season, they're 3-0-2, and, and when the Cavaliers trail to start a match, in 2024, they've done that five times, 0-4-1. One point will not make the Cavaliers satisfied tonight. They need all three. A defeat to a Patriot League team for the second time this season, that would do some significant damage to their RPI. It would dent it for sure. For those that are just jumping on board for this who's season after they've won three in a row. Well, Virginia lost to Colgate, second game of the year on August the 25th, 1-0. They had an opportunity to get a tie, but Abogu hit the post on a penalty kick in the second half. Jack Beerling scored the lone goal for the Raiders that night. And we asked Coach Samuel, will you bring up that another Patriot League team came into Klockner and beat UVA this season? He said, no, we don't need that as motivation. And truth be told, the guys will already know that. They know how to search the internet, go on social media. We're just going to play our game. That's what we're focused on. Virginia's coaching staff has spoken so highly of the team's resolute attitude right now. You know, sometimes you go through the tough stretch that the Cavaliers went through to begin the season and everyone just kind of folds the year. But this bunch has really found its magic over the last three matches and hoping that they've got to come back in them tonight. Here's Elgersma for American. Coach Samuel has not made any changes so far. 
But his bench is moving and active, and it seems like a lot of guys are ready to come in at the next whistle. Boyle couldn't jam it around Brendan Lamb, and here is Umberto Pella slaloming. Pella using the body. Too much contact that time from Boyle. And Clark stops the play. Free kick for the Hoots. At least five or six different Eagles are ready to come in. Coach Samuel said in these non-conference games, you know, he might rotate a little bit more than he would in a conference match. But that does not take away from the game plan. It doesn't take away from the tactics that they're hoping to employ tonight. Beauvoir dashing outside the 18-yard box. Regains. Beauvoir faking. Shirley glues himself onto Beauvoir, who resets for Pella. Umberto scanning. Drives it in over the head of Brisuela. Kiamani could have let that roll out of bounds if he wanted to, but American hopes to get the counter on here with Hershey and Akum nearest the ball. And Akum ducking the shoulders, trying to dupe Hershey, giving it to his fellow center back in Nick Dang. It was the Lipscomb's transfer who got the goal for the Hoos in the 19th minute off a corner kick. His fifth on the season. Kome Obogu and Cesar Cordova are waiting to come into the match for Coach Geldovach. So we will see a lot of new players coming up. Mangarov combining with Brisuela. His, his minutes likely coming to a close here in the first half with Obogu destined to be his sub. Akum. Lamb finds a pocket. Delivers it to Beauvoir. American needs some good 1v1 defending from Fogel. And he accomplishes the task. Nicely done from Jonah Fogel. So we'll get those changes from both sides here. It is a Bogu and Cordova for Virginia. American bringing on Mustafa So, the senior from East Newark, New York, New Jersey, rather. And a lot of other guys coming in as well. Reyes Para is one of them. Jared Weber, who we told you earlier, is a guy who will play the right back spot. Jonah Fogel will move over to the left back spot. Javi Gonzalez, another youngster, freshman from Queens in that area. 27 in blue. He's in the match as well with... Sebastian Garces slotting in as the right wing for now. We'll stop the clock here. As uh, Mr. Clark looks over at uh, Mr. Weber and says, come on, move back a little bit, please, will you? Lamb boosting it over to Abogu. Komei has two goals this season. Scored in the 45th minute in the opening match against Ryder. And also had the game-tying goal against Cal on the road in the 59th minute of that matchup in the ACC. The new national rankings were released earlier today. And there are seven ACC teams inside the top 25 to lead all conferences in the country. How about Pitt? Panthers have lost two consecutive matches. The Panthers were number one in the country, but Pitt was upset by Cal on Friday and then again by High Point last night. And that pushed the Panthers inside the top 25. First win in Big South history over the number one team in the nation. Stanford moving up three spots from five to two. Their only loss this season was on the farm to Denver in August. You have UNC at number seven, Clemson at number eight. SMU is the number 10 team in the country moving up five spots. Duke also moved up five spots to number 11. And NC State cracking the top 25 at number 23. The Wolfpack have not had a winning season since 2019 when they last made the NCAA tournament. 
And right now they are 5-2-4. and four. Wolfpack have two consecutive road ties at number two Stanford and in Blacksburg against number 24 Virginia Tech at the time. The Hokies dropping out of the top 25. Keep in mind with the ACC, unlike the women's side, which only includes the top six teams in the ACC tournament, all 15 programs make the ACC tournament on the men's side with the number one seed awarded a first round bye. The Atlantic and Coastal divisions have been eliminated in the ACC, each team playing eight conference games. First round and quarterfinals will be on campus sites semifinals and championship game at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Visa loops it towards Abogu, hangs up in the wind. As Elgersma clears for Mustafa So. He was born in Gambia. Lived in New Jersey throughout his childhood. A lot of internationals on both sides. American with five on its roster. And Virginia has eight. Akum driving it off the noggin of Shirley. Virginia throw with 10 minutes to play in the first half. If you're just joining us, well, you missed a whole bunch. Huh. Sixth minute of the match, Toshi Davis, the only guy who was in the starting 11 for American who wasn't a starter in its last match against Lehigh, got the first goal in this match. Joey Vitruni made an excellent save to start against Troy Elgersma, but Davis deposited the rebound five minutes and two seconds into the match. And then American, about seven and a half minutes later, got its second goal from Sam Hershey, his third goal on the season, assisted by Elgersma and Oliver Snowden. And then Virginia, after video review, the call was confirmed. A goal from Nick Deng. Moments after he was injured on another corner kick, popped right back up and then headed one home. Paul Visa getting the assist, his fifth to lead the Cavaliers this season. And the fifth goal for Deng to also pace the Hoos. Well, Joey Petruti was just tremendous down the stretch of last season. Hoping to keep that form down the stretch of 24. Another chance for American inside the box. And it nearly went. That's Colin O'Brien. 19 in blue who had that opportunity. Has played in just three games off the bench this season. He did play 11 minutes against Lehigh though in the last match. Lamb tripped up and a foul as Gonzalez and Garces were closing him down. Lamb bolting. He wanted the whistle and finally it came as he was wrapped up by So and Mustafa gets a talking to. Virginia continues on. Dang, how about that ball? That is why he is getting MLS attention. It may go underrated when you're watching at home, but to blast that kind of ball 50 yards in the air with pressure on you, that says something about your talent and your strength. Garces tries to seam it. As Virginia settles it down, Grant Howard. O'Brien, American working the far flank with Para. O'Brien, so communicating, but Trudy has to leap in order to haul it in. And now Batruni wants to work rapidly. Porter Devon near the touchline. Great defense from American. 
It was Shirley and Weber shadowing Cordova. Under six and a half to play in the first half. Shots in favor of the Cavaliers, 9-4. American, though, with three shots on target, and Virginia with only one, the goal from Dang. Garces, the junior from Bethlehem, who played in his hometown the other night against Lehigh. American really defending in two banks of four with the two frontline players of So and O'Brien. Cordova has the ball here. Gashi was making the run, but they could not get it to Albin. Fisa. Cordova asking for it. Instead, they go diagonal. Lamb chesting it. Tibbets off one bounce. He retrieves it and slows it down for the Eagles. Tibbets a year ago made 12 starts, 5 4 and 3. He has been the starter for the entirety of this season, responsible for the 3 4 and 5 record for the Eagles so far in 2024. Nunn, the Australian, and his center back partner Shirley from Germantown, Maryland. So, and Dang in a tussle here. Dang with the shoulder. Hit the weight room, man. Had a really good conversation with associate head coach Adam Perrin about Nick Dang yesterday. And he said, look, with how well Nick is playing this season, scoring goals, defending excellently, getting a lot of MLS attention, agents, yeah, the whole thing. But he's not really focused on that stuff. He's really a team guy and tries to keep his mind pretty level. Doesn't really think about the future all that much. With under four minutes to play now in the first half. Gashi tries to swoop it in to Lamb. American has deflected a lot of balls inside its own defensive third tonight. Grant Howard shaking. as Nick Dang monitors the field. Dang a three-time A-Sun champion with Lipscomb three years with the Bisons, an all-A-Sun first-team selection last year as a redshirt sophomore and the A-Sun freshman of the year as a redshirt freshman two years ago. Tibbet smacks it, but it evades O'Brien and all the way back for Grant Howard. 50 degrees at opening kick. It should drop down to yeah, the mid to high 40s by the time this match is over. Everybody bundled up here at Clockner Stadium after Sunday afternoon's women's soccer match against SMU. Everybody was wearing shorts and a T-shirt. It was 80 degrees out here. Yes, I know, day versus night, but still. That was just a couple days ago. Oh, you saw Zach Samuel on the bottom of your screen there. He seemed to be pretty upset with either the referee or his own players. And I think he may have saw that there was something open with the counterattack. Gashi decides to hammer it for Cordova. Tibbets near the edge of his 18, blasting it away. Pella accelerating. Dropping it off now for Mangarov, who pinches in. Grant Howard now as a uh, de facto right back. He plays the right center back. 
But Virginia very fluid in its formation, a lot of flexibility, a lot of versatility for a lot of players. This is crafty here from Gashi. Visa's cross is denied by the defense of Cooper Nunn. A buck 20 to play in the opening 45. Cordova waiting, crossing, back up in the air. Cordova going through the Eagle player. That was Garces. And a free kick for AU. One minute, one minute to Under play. a minute to go now in the first half. 10-5, the advantage in shots for the Hoos. American, though, has four shots on goal. Joey Petruni has been tested early on. And the Eagles have found two. American has not registered a corner so far. Virginia does have five. Especially after the Cavaliers goal by Nick Dang. It's been mostly the who's in possession. But American came out with a thunderous star, no doubt about that. Charlie pops it back up. Elgersma says, I got it. As American tries to waste away the remaining time on this first half Nine, clock. Eight, and Virginia not seven, much of a rush six, either. Five, four, Done with 45 three, here from Clockner two, Stadium. One. Thankfully for the Hoos, they get one off a set piece from Nick Dang. But it's American in front. Toshi Davis scoring in the sixth minute. Thanks to all. Kome Obogu remains the central striker for UVA. Remember with the substitution rules in men's soccer this season, you only get six windows, no re-entry in the second half. Off we go in half number two. Cavs in the white, Eagles in the blue. American with a win tonight replicates an ACC road victory from a year ago. American beat NC State in Raleigh in 2023-2-1. And two of the guys that scored in that match are still here with the Eagles, Mustafa So and Sam Hershey. And Hershey is on the score sheet tonight. Grant Howard slipping. They were still watering the surface before the game, despite the fact it rained a bit here in Charlottesville earlier today. As Akori is out wide. No Brendan Lamb on the pitch to begin the second half. Hmm. Sophomore from Apex, North Carolina in the Raleigh area has started every match this season and has played a lot of 90 minutes in those matches. Interception here, Ethan Boyle. But he coughs it right back up to Danny Mangarov. Bogu falls down. Cavaliers looking for a whistle. They don't get it. As Davis puts it right on the foot of his opposition, Nick Dang. Well, we spoke with Coach Samuel, and he said that, you know, when they're playing at their best, their center mids are popping in their 3 4 2 1 formation. It's really a box center midfield that they have with guys like Snowden and Davis and Takahashi and Boyle. And I'd say at times those guys have uh, had the mojo tonight. We asked him also about the Lehigh match, and you know we told you earlier that you go by the expected goals total. It pointed in Americans' favor, but they lost 3-1. Uh, he said, I, I don't really know how to explain that. I, I felt comfortable in the first half, then just stuff started to happen in the second half that was bad. I left the game being like, what the heck? He said, we imposed ourselves on them in the first half, but you really want to get a goal for it. That never happened. And that opened the door for Lehigh to score three. George Gelnovach, meanwhile, coming off the Boston College win, he said it was a very emotional game, but his team handled the emotions very well. And this one will be emotional tonight, trailing. Oh, that one just sprayed near the crossbar by Parvu. 6-2 freshman from Cumberland, Rhode Island. The flick on, space for a Corey, slides it through. Oh, Bogu on the finish. Third goal this year for Kome of Bogu. Cap scores two straight, and they're back even.
Danny Mangarov, he is a wizard. Find space when seemingly there is none. And David Okori will certainly get the assist. That is his first career point. The substitution works for Coach Gelnovich. And Kome Ubogu with his 14th career goal, his 13th as a substitute. And we have ourselves a brand new match here from Klockner Stadium with still 42 minutes remaining. And if you weren't with us earlier, we told you that Coach Samuel, he is not content to just sit back, get a moral victory without actually getting three points. He wants his team to compete. Jilan Zuansha is in the match for the first time, 10 in blue. Zuansha, the reigning Patriot League Offensive Player of the Week, scored two goals in five minutes to beat Army 2-1, including an incredible back heel goal. Zuwancha's older brother, Jerry, was also an American forward for six seasons from 2017 to 2022. Scored eight goals and six assists in 79 career matches. Jilan has seven goals in his career, the senior from Cameroon. Takahashi, the senior from Japan. That goes off the back heel of Shirley, and then the half volley from outside the box was way too high. That was Chris Sullivan who had the try, the freshman from Southampton, New York, and Suffolk County. Sullivan played just two minutes off the bench against Lehigh after not playing in the previous match against Army. American with only three wins on the season over Loyola, a crazy affair against UMBC that finished 4-3, and the 2-1 win over Army on the road a week ago. It's Howard, Akum, and Dang as the three center backs for UVA. Austin Rome got the starting nod, but came out after UVA gave up the two goals in the first half. Akori playing the left wing back that is normally occupied by Brendan Lamb. And now Luke Burns bursting and surely disrupting things for American. Virginia with a little extra pep in its step right now. Cavs hoping to make it four straight wins. They've moved up about 60 spots in the RPI over the last couple of weeks. Umberto Pella examining the situation. Akori, Gashi, back to David Akori. The junior waits, tried to slip it in there for Burns. Back to the outside with Gashi. Akori, Mangarov lunging. Akori releases before that a foul on the Hoos. Well, Virginia's last come-from-behind victory was last season, October 13th, so nearly one year ago, against Pitt. Trailed 1-0 in that match, beat the Panthers 2-1. The last time the Cavaliers overcame a two-goal deficit, October 28th of 2022, trailed 2-0 in Chapel Hill against North Carolina, scored the game's final two goals and got a 2-2 tie. Now, the last time the Cavaliers got a win when they were down 2-0 in a match, you have to go back a dozen years. October 19, 2012, beat Virginia Tech in overtime 3-2 after they were down 2-0. Ethan Boyle tries to catch Batruni out of his cage, but the shot sailed high and wide and a goal kick for the Coastal Carolina transfer. We've come to find out that Joey Petruni has a sweet tooth. The guy really loves candy. And you would think for a guy that certainly has MLS potential, yeah, you know, stay on top of your diet. I'm sure he does and just has, you know, a, a treat here or there. But uh, he'll sneak a cinnamon roll in there during dinner if they're going to Olive Garden from time to time, which will uh, make the coaching staff shake their head. He'll offer up his candy, though, to his teammates. He's a very polite guy, though.
Parvu. Mangarov with Howard making the overlapping run. Grant Howard bobbing and weaving and waiting and finding Mangarov and in for a Bogu and links up there with Howard and fizzes it across. Oh, what a beauty from the Hoos. Virginia in front. It's Luke Burns. UVA has climbed the mountain. The Hoos are in front for the first time tonight. Tiki Taka, Mangarov, Obogu, Howard, and then the freshman, Luke Burns, bang, into the back of the net. So how about that? George Geldovac reaches into his subs. Luke Burns, a guy who hasn't played over the last couple of matches, he's on the end of that one. David Okori involved in the second goal. Okori prior to tonight had only played in seven matches this season. And UVA with a 3-2 advantage over American. Cavaliers now tie their second largest output in goal scoring this season. Had three goals in the opener against Ryder and scored five against St. Joe's on August the 29th in a 5 0 win. Down the line it goes for Burns, and now well, Corey dashes inside the box and a sliding challenge from Cooper Nunn. So now American, they've been under siege, and the Eagles have to respond. Bogu in an offside position, says the assistant referee. Robert Betts and Paolo Cardea on the perimeter of the field with uh, Rashawn Clark on the inside. Michael Kelly Dunn is the fourth official. It's a real testament to these Cavaliers. Don't panic. They haven't done that throughout the duration of the season when things haven't gone their way. They didn't panic when they trailed 2-0 tonight. Now this coaching staff certainly believes, just from speaking with them throughout the year, that they have the, the intestinal fortitude. That they know that, hey, you know, we put ourselves in a bad situation to start the year. Let's dig ourselves out of it. Let's do it together. Let's find that team camaraderie. Let's gel through the adversity. And they've done that. You know, there was a significant shift in the 72 hours between the UNCG loss and then the win over Virginia Tech here at Clockner Stadium. They approached training differently. Practices became a lot more competitive. And then before the game that they played against Virginia Tech, Matt Chulis, one of the associate head coaches, talked with the team about the importance of wearing those seven stars, representing the seven national championships, and really what it means to be a Cavalier. A lot of freshmen on this team, a lot of transfers, so just making sure that the guys understand just how special of an opportunity it is to be on grounds. Those seven national championships only trailing a couple of programs. In St. Louis with 10 and Indiana with eight. Fans upset at uh, Ethan Boyle here. As Joey Petruni retrieves it. Both guys showing a good deal of sportsmanship here. Nick okay. Dang there. We also found out that prior to that Friday match against Virginia Tech a couple weeks back, the Cavaliers coaching staff played Al Pacino's Any Given Sunday speech. Luke Burns making a big sprint. The poke out wide for Parvu. Snakes inside. Gashi waiting. And Virginia content to find the right opportunity, but now the giveaway to Jonah Fogel and the clearance. 
I can just hear Pacino saying in my head, on this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. If you're very young and you haven't seen that snippet, you have to. It just pumps you up every single time. And clearly, it worked for the Cavaliers because they would go on to beat the Hokies 2-1 that night in a rivalry game, the Commonwealth Clash, as it is referred to here. This guy knows all about the Commonwealth Clash. Grant Howard, who moved over from Virginia Tech here to Charlottesville. His first season with UVA as he turns and forfeits possession. And Toshi Davis stumbling, and they'll bring this back for a free kick for American. Davis scored the game opening goal tonight and his career opening goal. That was back in the sixth minute. Five minutes and two seconds in. Now the question for the Eagles this season, who is going to get on the end of the service? Who is going to provide us goals? Entering this match, there was a four-way tie for first on the team with two goals. Hershey, Elgersma, Zuancha, and So. Now Hershey got his third earlier tonight. But you're looking for that guy to be that threat. They think Troy Elgersma can really step it up and provide some goals. Maybe he's a factor down the stretch, had an assist in the first half. One of those guys with 22, Claudio Reyna. Good company. Mangarov has a hit. That's repelled off the body of Takahashi. His fellow number six, Pella, drives it back. Here's Dang. Howard. Pella. He falls down, and he's grabbing at his ankle. And that's what was injured in warm-ups against Stanford a few weeks back. Missed three games, and perhaps there was a cleat left in there on the challenge. So it's Takahashi, ooh, steps right on the right foot of Umberto. Pella is asking Rashawn Clark, you think about showing a card there maybe? Takahashi has to start to be careful, by the way. He does have three yellow cards, and they are without one of their main guys, Leo Palomo, tonight, who has five yellow cards. The cross in as they sought a Bogu. Back to Luke Burns, and now Akori and Pella. Now, it's not the time of the match when American has to start taking risks. You'd expect the Eagles to continue defending in their two banks of four, but at some point, they need to challenge the Cavaliers' back line and pose a threat to Joey Petruni. UVA had a 10-5 edge in shots in the first half. Now it's up to 13-7. Nick Dang. Great anticipation, tumbles down, and a free kick, and now Dang wants to give a little extra shoulder or bump to Ethan Boyle as the two veteran collegiate soccer players come together. All righty, keep your eyes on number two in white. Dude is a set piece machine, Nick Dang. Mangarov drives it. Diving stop, Tibbets. He left a crumble or two underneath the table, but he gathered it up. Snowed in the spin, and the delivery to Zuancha. Play continues. A Corey shuttling, and finding the outlet with Luke Burns, who scored the last Cavaliers goal.
Carvu. Heaves it in towards the box, bounces down, and a clearance from Nunn. Oh, crafty play. And the athleticism from Parvu, who receives it right back. And the cross in, and a Bogu! It's a flick, and it's a Bray. Oh my goodness, what a goal! Four straight for the Hoos. Pending another review. Alex Parvu, they've been very complimentary of his service both in training and in the game against Boston College too. Shows it off again. So if the call stands, Kome Obogu with his second career brace and his first in three years. Score two against VCU, September 28th of 2021, and he replicates that tonight on October the 15th of 2024. So, they will review potentially an offside. Now, of course, we don't have the angle right down the line that you'd see on a Saturday or Sunday in the Premier League. But just as Parvu is getting ready to cross this ball in, is Ubogu beyond the back line? Now it's interesting because on first glance, and again, obviously you don't have the view down the line. But from the vantage point that we were receiving that angle, you, you start to think, okay, is Abogu beyond the last man? Now you have Cooper Nunn. I believe that's the last defender you see. And they're going to stay with the call on the field, which was a goal. For his second goal of the evening, number 18, Kame Ubogu. So it's 4-2 for the Hoos. Virginia has scored three since halftime. Abogu in the 48th, Burns in the 53rd, Abogu once again in the 61st. Alex Parvu, by the way, gets his first career point on the assist. Alvin Gashi also gets an assist on that one. And Grant Howard also got his first career point earlier on the goal from Burns. So everybody is stuffing the stat sheet tonight. Sam Hershey has checked back in for American. They need goal scoring, and he's the guy that's most likely to produce it. And here is Hershey. Using his back to shield off Akum. They floated over Snowden, and now it's Fogel who has moved over to the left side. Toshi Davis trying to hoodwink Parvu. Instead, it's in the midst of Joey Batruni, who wants to distribute quickly. Cavalier second half onslaughts. One goal shy of their season high five against St. Joe's in the third match of the year. And again, if this result holds, it's the first time in a dozen years the Hoos come back from a two goal deficit to win a match. You know, you, you say some of those figures, and, and it's you know not really an indictment on the Cavaliers' comeback ability. It's more about the fact that the Cavaliers haven't really trailed all that much in the last 12 years. So they don't really get a lot of opportunities to come back from do two goal deficits to win. So in a 4-2 game, the Cavaliers right now in control, and not much towards Joey Petruni from American here in the second half. 
Dang trying to slice it in there for a Bogu. And now American hoping to counter. Takahashi hit from behind and a free kick. Umberto Pella knew it right away as he walks away from the official. Taku Takahashi, a guy who has played a myriad of roles for this team this season. Left back, left mid, center mid. He's been asked to do a lot with the injury to Zemi Rodriguez after the first 10 minutes of the season with an ACL. Cavaliers back line sets up on the 18. Takahashi from 35 yards out hammered it off the two-man wall of the Hoos. Fogel, excellent hustle here from Mangarov. Sullivan, keep it down the line. And the cross from Jared Weber was blocked. Corner kick for American, second on the night for the Eagles. Now, American came into Klockner nine years ago and beat the Cavaliers by a 1-0 scoreline. Virginia won the matchup in 2022. American had the 2-0 lead. UVA scored the last four tonight. Back to Snowden. Fogel, the diagonal that hangs up. Mangarov couldn't get it. A Corey helping out. Mangarov with the clearance out of bounds. Hershey, this is offside here. Sullivan offside. was behind the back line for the Hoos. So here's the goal from Abogu that the referee decided to take a quick look at. Trying to see if Abogu was offside. And from this angle, yeah, I think it's really tough to tell if Abogu is beyond the center back Cooper Dunn. He may have been, but again, we just don't have that angle down the line to truly decipher it. Wow, you could pose a hypothesis. You could claim, ah, you know, it's probably offside, if, especially if you're on the American side. But again, from the naked eye, which is essentially the view from the center of the field, which is not the greatest angle, you, you just don't know. Oh, Snowden puts it down, hoping to find a teammate, but nobody opened up. And now he'll let it go as uh, Shirley will Move it towards the near side with Fogel. Troy Elgersma. And now the Cavaliers want to step it up. Parvu and Abogu. Shirley rainbows it towards the right corner. Sullivan poking his foot in there. Victor Akum does nicely. Pops it off the head of one of the American players. That was Weber. And the Cavaliers offside, Burns. Hayes Wood is re receiving some instruction from the coaching staff. He is ready to check in. The graduate student from Chattanooga coming over from Lipscomb, just like his good buddy Nick Dang. Wood had not played in the Virginia Tech and James Madison matches, but played a little bit off the bench, 10 minutes against Boston College in Newton, Mass. on Friday night. Hard to believe the Cavaliers had not won a game at Boston College since 2005. Tough place to play, turf field. They were 0-4-2 in their previous six road games against Boston College. Mangarov wants to be on SportsCenter tonight. Instead, he'll force someone to uh, get that ball, which is rolling way down the hill. So here is Hayes Wood for the Cavaliers, taking off Kome Obogu. What a shift he put in. Kome with his second career two-goal match. And he did so in a matter of minutes tonight. A 
Abogu continues to be a lethal sub. So goals number 14 and 15 on his career, 13 and 14 as a reserve. Akori blazes and uses the outside of the foot. Couldn't corkscrew it in there for Wood. And it's gathered in by the goalie Tibbets. Snowden, Sullivan, back to Snowden. Fogel, who is ambidextrous. Left foot, right foot, doesn't really matter for this guy. Lay it forward for Hershey. Nick Dang, not afraid of any challenge. Wood drops it off, Gashi. Oh, he tornadoes around a defender of Elgersma and earns the whistle. Doesn't this feel different than the first 10 to 15 minutes of the match? Doesn't it feel like the Cavaliers just have some swagger? Every time someone touches the ball in a white jersey, you, you almost feel like they're going to make the right play. And I don't think this is going to be a team that anybody wants to face, whether it's in the ACC tournament or if the Cavaliers make the NCAA tournament. Right now with an RPI of 39th in the country, 10th in the ACC, but we saw 11 current ACC members make the NCAA tournament last season. 11 out of the now 15 in the ACC. Selection show, by the way, on Monday, November 18th. And we'll get a good idea of what the selection committee is thinking about. Coming up on Sunday on ESPNU at halftime of the Penn Cornell game, which begins at 12, the NCAA Division I Men's Soccer Committee will reveal its midseason top 16. So that'll be exciting to get a feel for where the committee has everybody in their thoughts. Right now you have seven ACC teams that are ranked, six inside the top 11, according to the U.S. coaches poll. Cavaliers not one of them. UVA was the preseason number 13 team in the nation. A lot of respect for the talent on this roster. It has taken time for them to gel. They're starting to do so as Mangara puts a heater on Tibbets. Harvu whacks it. Back to Mangarov. That ball did trickle out of bounds, says the assistant referee. And a goal kick for American. 48 teams make the NCAA tournament. About half of them are at-large selections. And about half are automatic qualifiers by winning the conference. And again, all 15 ACC members in men's soccer will be playing in the ACC tournament with the number one seed getting a first round bye. First and quarterfinal rounds will be hosted by higher seats. Hayes Wood goes shoulder to shoulder with Cooper Nunn. Play continues. Wood, a really physical forward, but couldn't combine there with Parvu. Elgersma dives to the ground and a free kick. Parvu's a very tough guy. In fact, in his first ever collegiate game, played 13 minutes off the bench against Ryder and was given a red card for a high boot. Coaching staff mentioned that he has Romanian descent, so he's uh, not threatened by anybody. Eighteen minutes to play in the second half. American scoring goals in the sixth and thirteenth minutes of this one. Really putting a damper into the uh, fan base here. That was expecting some really good things. Ranked wins over Virginia Tech and James Madison, and then a tough, gritty road win against Boston College, an Eagles team that went down to nine men late in the match, by the way, with a couple of red cards. And Virginia had to uh, settle down, regather themselves. And the Cavaliers got a crucial goal in the 19th minute off a corner kick from Nick Dang. Paul Visa with his 22nd career assist to put him in a six-way tie for 10th all-time in Cavaliers history. And that's saying something. And then UVA came out on a mission in the second half. 
Two minutes and 29 seconds after halftime, Abogu with his first. Then Burns got his second career goal in the 53rd minute. He scored against UNCG earlier this season. And then Abogu with his second in the 61st minute, his second career brace. Now Corey tiptoeing inside the box. And referee Rashawn Clark says it was last off of David. As the Cavaliers will bring on a couple more guys. Cesar Cordova is back in the match. And here is Parker Sloan, whose role has been on and off throughout the season. As Sloan will play in the right center back spot for Grant Howard. Cordova, the sophomore from Houston, he's still looking to put one into the back of the net for the first time in his career. He's played off the bench now over the last four games after getting 75 minutes in a start against UNCG. I mean, from a neutral perspective, you're looking at this Cavaliers season as a whole, and, you know, you, you go to that UNCG match after that one, and, and you're saying to yourself, does this Cavaliers team have it? Clearly, it, the answer is yes. They, they do have it. Wow, oh, American. And it felt like they needed a season-changing moment, a season-changing match. And that Virginia Tech match certainly served that. And then, yeah, they get fortuitous. But it was because of Virginia driving the play. And we say fortuitous in reference to the James Madison match when Virginia got the winner on an own goal from JMU that went off of P2 with about 58 seconds to go. But the Cavaliers, they, they got fortunate, but they earned it because they were the better team in the second half. No question about that. Reyes Para outside Elgersma. And there's the first involvement of Parker Sloan, the former Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year out of Powhatan High School. Kid who always dreamed of playing soccer here at Virginia. as he uh, settles right into uh, the six-yard box next to Mr. Petruni. Short cross off the corner from Takahashi. Taku gets it back. Secondary cross was ricocheted, and now Virginia gets it outside the box. Snowden arcs it. Para near the corner flag. Gashi, aerial lead for Cordova. Snowden, that ball ping-pongs around. Para jams it all the way to the back post. It falls down, and the shot goes right into Joey Petruni's midsection. I believe it was Sam Hershey, who may have had an opportunity to just hit that on the first time instead of bringing it down. Drop it back to Shirley. Switch the point of the attack now to Kiamity. Para falling down in a battle with Parker Sloan. Oh, and now there's a, a bit of a push here from Dang and Elgersma. And the referee will stop the clock, and he wants to have a word with Dang and Elgersma. And Dang's getting a yellow card. So that, that is the first player in the book tonight. So... You see Sloan, who was uh, tangled up there with Para. And then the uh, disagreement between Elgersma and Dang near the touchline. All right, so play continues. Reinforcements for American waiting to check in. 
We saw Colin O'Brien, the freshman from Hoboken, New Jersey, in the first half. Fourth appearance on the season. He's in. Javi Gonzalez, another freshman, also returns. You see him on your screen there, the freshman from Woodside, New York. And number 27, Javi Gonzalez. Ian Webb Johnson is also on the back line for American right now. Para near the back post and Parvu is the one that heads it away. Yamini, Para, Kobe's cross in, hangs up in the air. Virginia clears with Luke Burns. None. Yamini. Hayes Wood shuttling after it. American opening up the field here with under a dozen minutes to play. Eagles get one here. Things get quite dicey down the stretch. Here's the shot outside the box. That was blocked. Weber had the try. A Corey defending. Weber on the byline out of bounds. Goal kick UVA. So after tonight, the Cavaliers move back into ACC play. Virginia hosting Syracuse on Saturday. That'll be a 7 o'clock start here on ACC Network Extra. The orange towards the bottom of the ACC standings. Tied for 10th with five points along with NC State. One, two, and two in the league so far. But Ian McIntyre's team has won three straight at UAlbany, at home against Notre Dame, at Providence. The oranges match against Loyola tonight was canceled due to weather. And then Virginia will head to the Steel City next weekend, Friday, October the 25th at Pitt. Panthers drop from number one to number four in the nation. That is the RPI litmus test. You win that match, how much you going up? And then UVA finishes up the regular season against a non-D1 opponent in Mary Washington, Wednesday, October 30th here at Clockner Stadium. Now this one uh, could be trouble here for Tibbetts and clears it away from Hayes Wood. And the reasoning for that Mary Washington match, if you're just taking a peek at the schedule for the first time, it's not going to help the RPI. Those don't count if you don't play a Division I game. But the idea with that is that if you have a five yellow card situation and someone accumulates too many yellow cards that, uh, hey, you can have them sit out that match instead of missing postseason time. So a uh, smart decision by Coach Galnovac to get that on the schedule. Oh, and again, just kind of an extra tune-up as well leading into the ACC tournament, which will begin the following Wednesday, November the 6th. American, four more Patriot League games on the schedule. Saturday against Lafayette to start that slate. Seven o'clock, ESPN Plus. Lafayette right now, the only Patriot League team above 500 overall on the season entering play today. Gasps after uh, Gashi had that block. Parvu, and they thought about giving the advantage, but uh, Parvu didn't really have any angles to play it forward, so Rashawn Clark allows the Cavaliers to reset it here. A resilient bunch of who's tonight. You know, you really start to think about the mathematics of the RPI and the judgment from the selection committee you know, right now you're in a decent spot, 39th in the RPI. But if the Cavaliers lost tonight to American, and the game's not over, certainly don't uh, discount the uh, last eight minutes and 40 seconds of this one. If they lost tonight, though, to a Patriot League team that has an RPI of 139, uh, it would take something extremely special, not only to beat Pitt, but probably something special in the ACC tournament to get this team into the big dance. Nick Dang falling down, shoulder to shoulder with Hershey. And Joey Petruni staring at the American attacker. That guy, number two in white, he is irreplaceable for this Cavaliers team. I don't think there's any question that 
he's been the best player for this Hoos team start to now of this season. Daniel Mangarov has had his moments. Brendan Lamb has certainly been a versatile piece. Joey Batruni has come up with some big saves, especially against Boston College on Friday. But in terms of consistency and goal scoring output from a defender, Nick Dang's got all of it. By the way, if memory serves, I think I may have made a mistake regarding the uh, story about Joey Petruni and his sweet tooth. So I think the cinnamon roll was had in the airport in Richmond, and it was a cheesecake that was uh, devoured at the Olive Garden. Just want to make sure I get that right. Say so his hard court of the Va is checking off here, and uh, the starter at one of the forward spots, Joaquin Brisuela is now into the match to join Hayeswood up front. Cavaliers have uh, found their formation, 3-5-2. Elgersma knocks it down. O'Brien, Hershey, Elgersma. Okay, Zach Samuel clapping his hands on the American sideline. Sixth season as the American head coach. 13 years with Georgetown. You know, the Virginia coaching staff has a lot of respect for Samuel, who went from a program that has a whole bunch of resources from a men's soccer side and then goes to a Patriot League school trying to build up this program that has made the NCAA tournament nine times, including the time he made it in the spring of uh, 2021. Briswella carries it towards the sideline. Hayes Wood was barking for it inside as Briswella slows it down now for Parvu, Gashi, and now it's Burns. If you remember in 2019, Virginia met Georgetown in the national title game, finished 3-3, went to penalties, and well, now if you remember, and you're a Cavaliers fan. I don't need to tell you the rest, but I'll do it anyway. Georgetown won in PKs. Inside it goes. Burns. That ball does stay in. And it's back for Parvu. Gashi. Right back to Parvu. Exquisite service off his right boot on the right channel. Well, Zach Samuel, he was not a part of that Georgetown program in 2019. But he coached a lot of the guys that ended up beating Virginia in the national title game. Derek Dotson was on that Georgetown team, now with Minnesota United. Jacob Montes, who plays in Syria. Sean Zawatsky with the Columbus Crew now. Dylan Nealis, who is uh, with the New York Red Bulls. So there was a lot of talent on that Georgetown squad. And similarly for Virginia, Daryl DK and Henry Kessler and Brett Halsey. Joe Bell, can't forget about Joe Bell. Briswella, somebody from the crowd says, have it, Joaquin. Under five to go now in the second half. Cavaliers entered this half with the deficit. It was 2-1 American. Virginia with three straight early in the second half. Now American threatening for a third. Weber inside, and the save from Batruni. Rebound pops in the air, and it's cleared away by Gashi. Batruni rubbing the right thigh as he put his body on the line. Batruni made the incredible save with 11 ticks to go against Boston College's Chavi O'Neal to preserve the 1-0 victory, and he preserves a two-goal lead right now. Petruni also made an exquisite save in the 13th minute, right before Boston College was issued its first red card. Cross in. Hella the clearance. Elgersma tees it up. Save Petruni. Smacks it away. Weber balloons it back towards the six. Headed down. Cavaliers avoid the American third goal. Elgersma lifting it. Pella. Jumping as high as he can to clear it aside, and Hayes Wood says enough of that. 
Three and a half to play. American on the front foot over the last couple of minutes. Eagles have only scored more than two goals once this season. That was a 4-3 win over UMBC. Garces, cross, Hershey. Oh, but Trudy, come on now. Sam Hershey vying for a brace. Joey Batruni turns that aside. Elgersma dancing in the midfield. Out wide to Weber, heavy touch. Victor Okum with the robbery and the advancement. Briswella slowly trotting towards the middle as Okum drops it off. Two and a half to go in the second half. High octane offensive game. 31 combined shots, Virginia with 17. 14 combined shots on target, American with eight. How about this last stop from Joey Petruni? And the cross from Garces. It was on a platter for Hershey. And then you could see Petruni just sticking out the right arm, the reflex save. And Joey's got six stops tonight. Triton Beauvoir, who started the match, will get a couple of minutes to end here as David Okori gets some fist bumps and some high fives from the coaching staff as he walks off. Okori with his first career assist tonight. Alex Parvu also with his first assist this evening. Luke Burns with his second career goal. Kome Abogu with his second career brace, also added an assist. Nick Dang, his fifth goal on the season. Paul Visa, a 22nd assist on his career to pull him into a tie for 10th all-time in Cavaliers history. And then Daniel Mankarov also had an assist, by the way, his fourth on the year. Up and down the lineup, Alvin Gashi also had an assist, his second on the year for the third-year starter. These are the types of results you need down the stretch of a season to give you confidence going into the final games of conference play. Pella. Gashi. Pella strides inside as uh, Cooper Nunn gets ahead on it. Back down for Gashi. And now Burns. Virginia at this point probably content to just hold the ball the final minute of play. One minute. One minute to play. Oh, Nick Dang just takes O'Brien off the ball, but he uh, did so illegally. Uh, referee Rashawn Clark was not going to allow the Eagles to quickly start that. Tibbetts, the goalie at midfield, as uh, Elgers Muzz header goes over the net. And a goal kick for Joey Petruni and the Hoos. And there are two players down, one for either side, both grabbing their heads. Oh, boy. Elgersma is down for American. Junior from California. That's a guy that uh, they cannot afford to lose. Elgersma, a season ago, had a goal against VCU. He's got a couple this year. They think that he can really put some into the back of the net more often. And for the Cavaliers, that was Umberto Pella who was on the ground. Good to see that he's back on his feet. Both athletic trainers having a look here. Alfonso Davila is the Eagles athletic trainer. Kim Johnston out there for UVA. So it's Pella and Elgersma as both guys were going for the ball. And uh, yeah, you can just see the, the crashing of the heads there. It's something that unfortunately comes with uh, this game. 
And you hope for both players sake that everything is all right. You know, Pella is on his feet, but uh, he's going to you know, walk towards the sideline with Johnston and uh, probably head off. And uh, we just hope the best here for Troy Elgersma. 12 seconds to go in the match and just not a time that, I mean, obviously you don't hope for this to happen at any time, but with so few amount of moments remaining, it just stings even more. It's productive to see that Elgersma is sitting up at this point. They're working on the leg as well. Well, after the final 12 seconds come off the clock, American will drop to three, five and five on the season. Again, go back at the Patriot League play on Saturday against Lafayette and Virginia will improve to six, four and three. Now Elgersma is uh, limping off here. Humberto Pella is waiting at midfield, so he might just uh, step onto the field for the final dozen seconds. Everybody is uh, putting their uh, seat backs over their shoulders and uh, walking out here. So the result is uh, certainly in hand. Rex Emmanuel Cobina, freshman from Toronto, who hasn't played since September the 7th. He is going to be the replacement here for Elgersma. So you can put him into your score sheet at home as Elgersma continues his walk slowly near the corner. So Joey Petruni sails it towards midfield. Ten, nine, Referee Rashawn Clark eight, says start the clock. Seven, six. And this game is done here from Clockner Stadium. It was nervy from the Cavaliers early on, American scoring the first two, but UVA can exhale. Big second half turnaround, UVA scores.